Hello, I started working on a multi-downloader because I made a, a simple downloader and I just felt like I should make a full-on multi-downloader tool that's for downloading content from web pages and I found it pretty useful. You can download from a URL in your clipboard or you can download from specified uh, from a specified link. So I'm just going to copy this link here into the uh, web link text box. It'll give me a, um, a file name to save it as and it will save it as or into your downloads directory. I'm going to change this to um, web download so I don't litter my uh, my download directory. And I'm going to hit download and there's your progress bar there and when all downloads have been completed it will tell you if you have this thing to minimize to tray and all downloads will be completed. It will just show a little information box. You can double click on the icon to bring it up again. And you can also do stuff like um, clear all downloads from your um, your download box from the, from the tray or from these buttons here. You can clear selected, clear and active. I'll show you that right now. I'm going to uh, mine a web page, my utilities web page, and download all of the available downloads or links on that web page using this web mining utility. And you can filter out some things using the uh, contains term here. It uses some just some simple um, string contains method to see if certain uh, links contain certain things. And you can specify if you want to contain, if you want to check for substrings in a full path or just the file name. And of course you can uh, toggle case and sensitivity. And then you've got the two attributes that I'm looking amongst right now, href and source. As I find more attributes to look amongst for links in uh, some offbeat web pages when I dissect them, I will add them to the project. But for now, it's just href and source. That's where you typically would find a link. Uh, sometimes there are like partials and they'll have just, it'll look like a directory kind of, and it won't have the domain in there. I'm simply constructing the partials using the current uh, website inputted by the user. Anyways, so you can do this, you can do the custom regex pattern, which is, there's one that's automatically generated from the current settings, and you can modify that, or you can just use um, this right here. So I'm just going to use the typical settings, I'm going to hit begin, and it's going to start downloading all the files on my utilities page. Now the web client class has its internal queuing system uh, so it's going to be downloading uh, two things at a time or one thing at a time and I just I could very well um, use synchronous web client downloads and have my own kind of queuing system in place but I just like uh, why would I want to do that this is good enough and uh, there's some more downloads completed there and you can kind of select, you can multi-select stuff using or holding down the control button. And you can hold down control shift, use the up arrow keys or click the items to expand your selection. Then you can hit clear selected to clear the selected items. And you can clear an active, of course, so completed downloads or downloads that have failed will be cleared. Uh, you can auto clear, so let's take a look at that. So basically, once the uh, download's complete, they're cleared from the download list. Of course, you can just kind of use this exit button to uh, remove queued downloads or whatever download you want, really. And if the download has only been partially downloaded and you delete it as it's downloading, uh, the program deletes that file after the stream has been closed to the um, file itself so that it's not just a garbage file in your downloads directory. And you've got your show error log here. Um, what that does is I'm going to have to download from a page like YouTube where it's going to have things that I really don't have permissions to download uh, or some other things that I can't really take into my calculations. Um, I'm not actually going to type that out. I'm going to use the uh, web link picker so you just open up this browser here and I'm going to type in youtube.com hit go and of course I got a little link here to my website and Google to make things easier for the user and then down in the bottom right hand corner you can hit use current URL to add the current URL to the um, 
well, it doesn't add. You can only download from one page at a time because it's not really supposed to be a full-on web miner. The passive web miner is just supposed to mine a single page. So there's the site that I navigated to. If you don't specify HTTP or FTP at the beginning of your uh, domain here, it will just assume that you're looking up HTTP and will insert that in the uh, page address. If you don't have these protocols um, identified in your link, then the web client class will not be able to utilize the URL and will not be able to ultimately download the web page. So let's uh, begin this. And I was going to demonstrate something. Uh, oh yeah, the error logs. So it's just going to bring up the error log window. Here it is right here. Should probably add a scroll bar to enable the scroll bar. So basically the error log window displays the exception message and then the data associated with the message. It's usually going to be the downloaded or the link that uh, the web client tries to download. Um, or it might be a website. If it can't download a website, then it will be the website's uh, address. So with YouTube, there's going to be a lot of things that I simply cannot download with the, um, with the program. But there's some things that I'm trying to account for. Like this, I can obviously download because I just typed it in my browser here and the browser has no problem opening it up and retrieving it. So I'm going to have to take a look at that and see why the web client can't download this JPEG. Okay, I'm going to download another single file again. And I'm gonna I gotta take auto clear completed off so we can do something. I don't know why I just resized there. And so basically you can double click on the file name and it will take you to its download location and select the file like it should. And then you've got your actual full link path that has been downloaded down here. So this is nothing very complex. It's really just something that will download um, from the HTML content and it's not going to be able to download like embedded content or anything like that. It's a very simple mining tool but can come in handy uh, every once in a while. So definitely check it out. It's going to be it's going to be on my SourceForge profile and I'm probably going to make it available in the top five or so spoken languages.